In this video, we will download and install SQL Server 2025 Public Preview. Hello, I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. Now, the first step with downloading SQL Server 2025 is whether you should. This is a public preview. So it's gone from private preview, where you had to apply to download it, to a public preview where anyone can download it. But should you? You should not be downloading SQL Server 2025 public preview or any public preview for that matter to use in a production environment. So you should not download it onto a main server or something like that. You should only download it onto, say, your own laptop or desktop for testing purposes only. Next, where do you download it from? So you can see that I've Googled SQL Server 2025 download. And the first link you can see I've got says SQL Server Downloads with Try SQL Server 2025. So let's try that. And you can see if I go to Top Downloads that we've got 2022. So it's not there. So let's scroll right up to the top and you can see Announcing Microsoft SQL Server 2025 Preview Now. So I'll click Preview Now. And we get to this Get Started for Free download the exe, that's an executable file. So if I click on that, then we get to another page where you have to register for your free trial. You have to enter your information. Now you can do it this way, but there is a much easier way. Let's have a look at the next link. SQL Server 2025 Preview Microsoft Evaluation Center. If I click on that, then you can just click on exe download 64-bit edition. And you can see it's just downloaded. No filling out a form. Now, obviously, when you see this video, the web pages may have changed, but this is what I can see at the time of recording. So now that I've downloaded it, I'll open it up. So do I want to allow this app to make changes to your device? Yes. And here we can see, I can say basic, custom, or download media. So basic, just installs it with the default configuration. So you're not asked. So you're not asked for various options. Download media is good if you want to download the file and then install them on another machine. And custom goes through the SQL Server installation wizard and then you can define what you want to install. So for now, I'm going to click on the basic installation. So first of all, we've got license terms, which you need to agree to if you want to install it. So have a read of them and I'm going to click on accept. Basically, they will say that this is a public preview and we're not liable and there's no support. And if you do want that, then you should be installing the 2022 version instead. Now, where do you want to install it? And this could be important because you may have a C drive which has got very little space and you may want to put it onto a D drive, for instance. So let's click on install. And then it's going to download the setup files. So you can see that they are over one gigabyte in size. So this is going to take a few minutes. So as you can see, I have sped up the video and we're just going to let it download. So now you can see it has downloaded the setup files, just making sure that they are okay and is now installing. So as you can see, it's not asking me for any additional information. So again, I've sped up the video and it's just going to install. And now you can see that SQL Server 2025 has been successfully installed. So we've got options at the bottom such as install SSMS. So that is SQL Server Management Studio. That is one way for actually accessing SQL Server. So it's the front engine as opposed to this SQL Server 2025, which is the back engine, which does all the work. Now, SSMS version 21 has had some major changes. It now uses the Visual Studio Engine, for example. For more information about how to install SSMS, please see the link which might be right at the top of the screen or is at the end of this video. Now, you can click on Customize to customize your installation. So if you want additional features adding, you can click on Connect Now, which opens up a command window and you can click on close to exit. So what I'm going to do now is open up SSMS or SQL Server Management Studio 
version twenty one. To connect to SQL Server twenty twenty five. So now the computer is asking you for the connection details. Now I already have a version of SQL Server installed on my computer twenty twenty two, and that server name is dot or local host one word. So if this is your first SQL Server that has been installed on your computer, then you can use that as the server name. If not, then we need to find it, and the easiest way is to click on browse. So if I expand local, here you can see, and this is the latest one. So I'll click on that, and you can see that the server name has now been filled in. Now, what's very important, if I just click connect, you'll see I can't actually connect, and you can see that encryption was enabled on this connection, but that the certificate chain was issued by something that is not trusted. So it is very important that you check. Trust server certificate before you can click connect. So here you can see I'm connected to my SQL Server 2025. We can tell that it is the 2025 version because it says SQL Server 17. So the 2022 version was version 16. 2025 is version 17. So if I click on New Query and then say Select Star from Sys. Objects, and click on Execute. Here you can see the results. Now you don't need the very latest version of SSMS to access SQL Server 2025, though it is recommended. So instead, let's have a look at SQL Server Management Studio 20, and let's connect to our SQL Server 2025 instance using this. So again, the first thing you will ask me is what is the name of the server. So I'm going to pretend I don't know, and I'm going to click on this drop down and go to Browse for More next to Server Name. So I'll expand Database Engine, and there we can see the server. So I'll click OK, and then I'm going to check Trust Server Certificate. So you don't need to do that if you've got an SQL Server. In your production environment, which has its own certificate, but that is not the case for what we're doing right now. So let's click on Connect, and I will click on New Query, and I will say Select Star from Sys. Objects again, and execute that. And here you can see that it has run. And again, you can also see we are connected to SQL Server 2025. Now coming up in this video. We'll have a look at how we can install SQL Server using the custom installation type, and this will give me things such as being able to name the server. I don't just have to use the default name that it gives me. However, first, if you are looking at the select statement and wondering how you can code your own select statements, then please go to our website, idodata.com. If I hover over the SQL menu, you'll see that we've got free courses relating to TSQL. So that is the language in SQL Server that you use to create select statements. We've got a one-hour course, a nine-hour course, and a twenty-nine-hour course. So regardless of how much time you've got, you can learn how to write your own select statements, whether they be simple ones, intermediate ones, or even quite advanced ones. So now let's look at the custom installation type of SQL Server 2025. So if I click on this. You'll see that the media gets downloaded to the C drive in a folder called SQL Server 2025, and this is the case even if you have used the basic installation that we did previously earlier on in this video. So I'm going to say yes, that's fine, and click install. So now you can see the download is successful, and the setup is going to start, and that's going to take me to this installation center. So I'm just going to first of all close my two versions of SQL Server Management Studio. So you might be wondering what link you need to press first, and the answer is if you want to install none of them. Instead, we go to the left-hand side and click on Installation, and then a new SQL Server standalone installation, or add features to an existing installation. And you'll also see that there is a link to SQL Server Management Tools or SSMS. So if I click 
on this top link, then that opens up this setup. So first of all, do I want to use Microsoft Update to check for updates? I'm going to say no to this. So I'm not going to check the box and click next. Then the computer is going to check whether I can install SQL Server, I can. So I'll click next. And then it says, do I want to perform a new installation of SQL Server or add features to an existing instance? So you can see my two instances here, one which is 2025 and the other which is 2022. So I'm going to say the... that I want to perform a new installation and click next. So this is going to be the evaluation edition. So just like with the basic installation, this is going to have a 180 day expiration. So you can see that there are other editions available, but the evaluation edition has the largest set of SQL server features. And given that this is the public preview, you don't want to be running it beyond the 180 day expiration you would want the released version. So I'm going to leave this as the evaluation free edition and click next. So once again, we have got the terms and conditions. So I'm going to check I accept the terms and the privacy statement, which again, both of which you should read. And then we've got a tab for Azure extension for SQL Server. Now, if you just want to evaluate SQL Server 2025 and are not wanting the Azure extension, then you should uncheck it. And what's a bit annoying is that it is checked by default. So if I'm just clicking next, 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 then you can see I can't get any further. So let's uncheck that and click next. Then we've got the feature selection. Well, for what I'm doing here, I want the database engine services. So I'd basically want to be able to use SQL Server 2025 without any of these more advanced features such as analysis services or integration services. So that's SSAS or SSIS. So I'll click on next. Alternatively, you might want to evaluate those if you are using SSAS or SSIS, in which case just check the boxes. Next, I've got the choice of a default instance or named instance. You can only have one default instance on your computer, and that is the one that you can just log into with dot or local host without needing a slash and then something afterwards. Given I've already got a default instance, I'm going to use a named instance. However, if you haven't got any default instance, if this is your first SQL server, then you should use default instance. Instead, I'm going to use a named instance and I'm going to call this SQL Server 2025. So this is one of the big advantages of going through this custom installation you can actually name a named instance. So let's click next. And then we get into the server configuration. And for this, I'm just going to leave everything alone. You might want to go into collation if you're using a different language to Western Europe and change this. But for now, I'm going to leave it as that and click next. And then we got the database engine configuration. So we can choose Windows Authentication Mode, or both Windows Authentication and SQL Server Authentication. Microsoft nowadays recommends you just use the Windows Authentication Mode. However, you will need an SQL Server Administrator. If I click on Next, you see I can't continue. So I need somebody who can make changes at any level to SQL Server. Without that, I wouldn't be able to use SQL Server effectively. So I'm going to add myself as the current user and then click next. So finally, it's giving me a list of what it's going to do. I'm fine with that and I'm going to click on install. So you can see it is going to download as necessary and then install. So I've sped up the video and I'm just going to let it install. So here you can see it is now installed and it was a very quick installation but that's probably because I've already got a version of SQL Server 2025 on my computer already. So I'm going to click close and I could install SQL Server management tools from this window, but I don't need to because I've already got it installed. So instead, what I'm going to do is launch the latest version of SQL Server Management Studio, version 21, and connect to this second named instance, 
of SQL Server 2025. So I'm going to click on Browse, expand the Local tab, and there we can see my SQL Server 2025 named instance. So I'll click on it and then click on Trust Server Certificate and click Connect. I'll create a new query. And again, I will say, select star from sys.objects and run. So in this video, we've had a look at how we can download and install SQL Server 2025 public preview. So again, this should not be installed on any computer which is being used for production purposes. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please give it a like. And why not subscribe and click that bell? That way you'll be notified of any new videos. Now, downloading and installing SQL Server Management Studio 21 is quite different to version 20. So if you'd like some guidance on how to do that, please click on the video on the end screen. And also go to our website if you'd like to know how to use SQL Server. I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. Thanks for watching and keep learning.